In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And Happy Easter, everyone! Happy Easter. The Lord is risen! Hallelujah. Christos Anesti, as the Eastern Orthodox say on the day of resurrection, which they celebrate today. My name is uh, the Reverend Fred Miller, and it is wonderful to be with you at St. John's this morning. And as you can see in the bulletin, I have had what's known as a late-in-life calling to ministry after 15 years in, in journalism and publishing and 19 years on Wall Street. So it's uh, been kind of a checkered career. Um, it's had its ups and downs, its highs and its lows. So it, it makes sense that I am here with you on Low Sunday as the Sunday after Easter is often called in, in the Western calendar. So it, it, it may be called Low Sunday today uh, to contrast with the high feasts of, of uh, Holy Week. Or, you know, maybe it's because of low attendance after Easter Sunday. <laughs> I'm just saying, that might be the case. Uh, but in some churches, you may have heard this before, you, in some churches on low Sunday, priests who are you know, tired out from Holy Week and everything, they, they, they uh, sometimes tell jokes instead of uh, preaching a sermon. Yeah, you know, for example, uh, there was a man who was once uh, lost on a desert island and was found years later, and he, he took his rescuers around, and he was, he was so proud to show them everything that he'd built. He showed, this is where I sleep, and this is the place where I eat, and here's my church, and so on and so forth. And, and someone said, well, what's that building way down there? And he said, oh, yeah, that's the church I used to go to. <laughs> and then there was uh, uh, this cat who died and went up to heaven, and St. Peter met the cat and said, Welcome to heaven, what would you like? And the cat answered, I'd like a nice soft bed. I lived in a barn my whole life. And so Peter gives the cat a nice soft bed. And the next day, a, a bunch of mice show up in heaven, and uh, St. Peter says, What would you like? And, and the mice said, well, We'd really like some skateboards. And Peter's a little puzzled by this, and... and uh, but he gives them skateboards anyway. And, and then the following day, Peter is uh, walking along, and he sees the cat and asks, so how do you like heaven so far? And, I love it, said the cat. The bed is so comfy, but best of all are these little meals on wheels. And, and then, okay, I'll, I'll stop soon. But, and, and then there was the, the church painter who decided to use thinner to save money and, and to make his pat, paint last longer. And so one day when he was out painting the church, it began to rain, and all the paint started running down the walls and made a big mess. And then a voice like thunder came from the sky. Repaint, repaint, and thin no more. <laughs> okay, I didn't say it was great humor. <laughs> Low Sunday may mean the, the low quality of the jokes. But w when you think about it, for us, every Sunday is low Sunday. We were not there on the original Easter day. And that's why in the, the very early church, the time after Easter was saved for something called the mystagogical catechesis, which is when the, the newly baptized were, were taught some of the more complicated aspects of our faith, the things that were hardest to believe. Now, we all need help with that, don't we? But the good news is that God in Christ is with us to bless us even when we are low and in the dark. God graces us even when we can't see. As Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. He helps all of us with our faith. And today's gospel shows how he helped the first disciples who were struggling to figure out what had happened to their lives. And, and they sure needed that help. In, in all four gospels, the, the disciples simply don't believe 
the first stories of the resurrection. In fact, they're so terrified that they hide behind locked doors. They're still hiding a week later. Fear of the authorities, the Romans, would certainly be understandable. But it, it doesn't say very much about their trust in God or in each other. The disciples do recognize Jesus once he shows them his wounds, and, and, and they're happy enough. But, but really, they're, they're no different from Thomas. They, none of them trusted Mary Magdalene's witness at the tomb. And Thomas doesn't trust the rest of the disciples either. Now, every year, on the second Sunday of Easter, we hear this same story of the apostle known as Doubting Thomas. And it's, it's a familiar story. You probably know it all by heart, but, but there are three important points that are sometimes overlooked. And first of all, Thomas is not doubting. He, he has been a loyal disciple from the get-go. He, he travels with Jesus to Lazarus's tomb, remember, in Bethany, even at the risk of being stoned to death. And later on, Thomas asks Jesus for details, exactly how he can be sure that he follows where Jesus says he is going, which is the way, the truth, and the life. So Thomas is really more of an honest questioner than a skeptic. And, and notice, Jesus never criticizes Thomas. As the book Holy Women, Holy Men puts it, what Jesus gives to Thomas does not create faith in him. It merely releases the faith that was in him already. And the second point about this story is that it's not really about Thomas either. It's about what happens to all the disciples after Jesus appears. Remember, Jesus gives them all peace. He sends them out in his name together to do the mission work. And he breathes on them all with the Holy Spirit. And every Sunday and during Easter tide, we're gonna hear from the book of Acts about how the Spirit empowers the disciples with new faith. And this same Spirit is inspiring us today to act together, not individually when we follow Jesus' command to love one another as he loved us. Finally, the end of our gospel reading today sounds like the, the end of the story, but, but it isn't. John has one more chapter left to go it, because it turns out that the meaning of Jesus' appearance to Thomas and the others didn't really sink in. They didn't quite get it. In, in the last chapter, the disciples are out there fishing on the Sea of Tiberias when Jesus appears on the beach. And once again, spoiler alert, they don't recognize Jesus either. Their belief is still defective. Jesus has to help them with their fishing technique and, and, and then provide another meal for them so that they can truly open their minds to the truth. And you know what? It, it takes time for us, all of us, too, to open our minds. After all, Thomas is only one of millions of people over the last two millennia who have struggled with their faith. And his story is not about Thomas doubting Jesus. It's about Jesus determined to reach Thomas and everyone else. As uh, Serene Jones, the president of Union Theological Seminary once put it, it is Jesus who refuses to let deadbolts and chains block the movement of love toward anyone. Now after the celebration of Easter Sunday last week, it, it won't be surprising if we find ourselves behind locked doors once in a while with doubts and, and fears about what's coming next in our lives, in our church lives too. 
And that can be especially true when, when you're in the middle of a rector search. And just like the disciples, we will all struggle from time to time. But Jesus has come to grace all of us, despite the closed doors we sometimes see, and the doors we close ourselves sometimes, so that Jesus has come. Send us out into the world. The story of Thomas, I like to say, is not a story of seeing is believing. It's the other way around. It's that believing is seeing. Our beliefs change how we see. Another word for belief might be trust. Trusting in our relationship with God. Just like the disciples, we are witnesses. But witnesses of our own transformation into a new life new way of seeing and acting in the world. The Easter stories call us to just this transformed life in God's kingdom. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. Let us go out and proclaim the truth we now can see.